All right, this is Boxing with the Truth, and I am the Truth. Today is July 25th, 2015, and today we have with us heavyweight Owen What the Heck Beck. How you doing today, Owen? Hey, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing great. You know, I had a wonderful morning, and just, just taking it easy to life right now. Okay, so I just want to... um. Bring the fans up to speed on some of uh, on your information. Um, like I just mentioned, uh, you were a heavyweight. Uh, your nickname is uh, What the Heck. Uh, your pro record was 29 wins, 20 knockouts, and 12 losses, correct? Correct. Okay, and you actually, you did win a belt. You were the WBA Federation Heavyweight Champion, correct? Yeah. That is correct. But yes, you, sir. but you also did fight for the WBA World Heavyweight Title, the WBC United yes. States uh, US NBC Title, the WBC uh, Latino Heavyweight Title, and the WBC uh, Fecom Box Heavyweight Title, right? Yes, sir. I did. So you definitely uh, had a full career. I mean, you fought for a lot of titles. I certainly did, man. I certainly did. Um, I wish if I had won them all, but, but there's, you know, far short. But there's a lot of guys that, that never even got to the point that, that, you're, that you got to in your career. There's a lot of guys that never even get a chance to fight for a title. Hey, you know, I was just one of the, the fortunate ones, one of the best ones to really get to that, got that far to, to that, that accomplishment, so... That, that, that's great. That, that, that's a good achievement, you know. And I mean, for that. yeah, and I mean, you fought some quality fighters. I mean, you fought Monte Barrett, you fought Ray Austin, uh, you fought Nikolai uh, Value, uh, Tony Thompson, yeah, um, Alex uh, Leopold or uh, Leopi, you yeah. fought Cedric uh, Boswell, David Rodriguez, you fought Dante Wilder, who is actually the world yeah. champion, heavyweight champion right now, and uh, Olga Maskev. So I mean, you fought. You, you definitely fought some tough fighters. Yeah, I fought some good fighters. I fought some tough guys. Some guys who was well worthy of being world champions and everything. So, hey, you know what can I say at the end of the day? Um, you know, some of it, I got. You know, I said I've come short. You know, a few times, but. Um, some of those things happen on my terms, but, you know, if I take it to, if I listen to point to where, you know, I should have taken it, then I know I would have been what has happened today. <laughs> okay, so I want to back up a little bit in your career. Um, your amateur record actually was 73 wins with five losses, right? Well, actually, it's more, but there's only 73 in my book. I actually have 405. Oh, okay. So now you uh, you started uh, boxing I'm at only, 10... I'm, only, I'm 10 years old. At 10 years old? Yes, sir. Okay, now, you were originally from Jamaica, so did you start boxing in Jamaica, or did you start boxing when you moved over here? No, I started boxing in Jamaica, Negro Jamaica. Okay, and, and what made you move yeah. over here? Well, actually, I I had moved to England when I um, when I was getting ready before I turned pro. I got approached by the British, you know, and I ended up going there at first. And you know, pretty much, I really wanted to come to the states because most of the guys that I really grew up with, that grew up around, was living here in the United States. So. I ended up came here instead of, so I ended up leaving and, and moved to the States. And so how did you get involved in the sport of boxing, Owen? It was, it was my dream, and, you know, there was a gym, it was a gym, and I used to go by the gym every day, pass by the going to school back and forth, and um, just always seen the guys running and always see them working out, you know, doing stuff, you know, for boxing and, you know, even been to a couple of matches while there was matches in the grill where I'm from. 
And I just happened to just walk in there one day and said I wanted to box. It was something I dreamed about and, you know, I, I know I can make it to being champion and I did. So let me ask you something. I know I know you say that you didn't win the the world title, but when you look back overall your your whole career, are you satisfied with your pro career? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm absolutely not satisfied. This is why I am still going at it, even though I have my own gym here, and I've got at least twenty five kids that I train. You know, the amateurs right now, I am not, I'm not satisfied because I know that I can still go back out and, and, and capture the, the, the heavyweight title. Oh, so you're actually still training on to, to fight again? I am training to fight again. I'll never stop training. <laughs> I'll never stop training. I'll leave in the gym. Okay, now are you down in Tennessee right now? Where are you? I'm in Kentucky right now. Um, you know, I'm right on the border of Tennessee, Virginia, and Kentucky. Um, I've got, I used to be in Nashville. I used to live in Nashville, but I ended up moving to Kentucky because, um, you know, my marriage, well, I'm divorced now, but, you know, for my marriage and, you know, my son. So, you know, I play a big part in my son's life now. He's seven years old, the eight next month. I play a big part in his life and what he's doing now, his career as a football player and a basketball player. So, have you uh, seen that you're training? Have, have you heard, had any talks with anybody? Are you lining up a fight soon? Well, um, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been on the, the net, and, you know, I've been speaking out. Um, Lucas Brown over in Australia, you know, I've been sending out tough messages, I've been, you know, contacting a promoter over there saying, hey, you know, Lucas Brown's going in Australia, you know, why can't I get that fight, you know, why can't we hook that up, so, so I don't know, it seems like I had to work my way from the bottom of the game, I don't know why. So you want Lucas Brown? I want him. <laughs> Okay. He's a bully. He's a bully. He's a bully just like, you know, I, you know, honestly, DeAndre Wilder is a small guy. I still think he's a bully. You know, I mean, some things went wrong in that he had their fight and some elbows and all that stuff, and I didn't think it's worthwhile, you know, having to, you know, taking elbows and all that stuff from him, you know, because for me, you know, the money was okay, it wasn't good. You know, I'm like, when the wife's been here taking elbows, risking, you know, eye socket or, you know, something, I'm not gonna sit here getting that right. I never stayed here for all reasons, you know. So I decided to just, you know, you know, call the fight. So, in your opinion, then, what type of fighter is Dante Wilder? Mm, I think he's an overrated fighter. I think he's an overrated fighter. I don't think, you know, I don't think he's a, he has really met somebody that really kind of box him or he's going to stand so to with somebody that really can do it. Now, on the other hand, I can do both, you know, because one of the things is I never believe in backing down from nothing, backing down from a time, backing down from a punch. I say, if you catch me, I go down, so be it. You know, hey, it happens. Um, like I say, you know, it's one of two things. You can be champion or you can be chump. You know, my choice is to become champ and to prove that I'm a champ. You know, I say some do stuff on the street. Champions stand up like a man in the ring and they go at it. You know, that's what champions do. So love, so respect, respect the fans, respect the people who support you. You know, um, the chums, the chum, they go on the street and buy a bag of trash and, and do all the things that happen outside. 
you know, but we can stand there and, and we can go, we can go into into lightning and thunder. I've always been that guy. You so, know, always explosive, lightning and thunder. So, so let me ask you something. Out of all the heavyweights, why do you want Lucas Brown? Because he's a bully? Well, I'm not saying he's a bully. You know, I've got, I've got a lot more respect for Lucas Brown than I would have for Wilder right now. You know, um, but the thing is, you know, he is, he is the man over in Australia right now. He's the man, you know, down under. You know, and I just think, you know, I've been down, I've been there, and I've, I've called back out Leah Pai, but I don't know what happened since that Crystal fight because I haven't heard nothing back from him since that fight. You know, because, you know, he was, he was getting beat until they gave him the win. You know, and, and I've, I've been in, I've been in certain, you know, matches like those. Um, Manuel Char again was the same thing in Germany. He was getting his tail handed to him too until they stopped in the 10 round, maybe 15 minutes, 15 seconds before the fight ended and gave him a win. You know, so guys like those, I never give no respect to. You can't beat me. On, on, you know, on boxing terms, don't beat him because you're a promoter or, you know, somebody's trying to help you. So let me ask you something. You fought all over the world. You fought in Russia, Poland, Australia, Germany, Mexico, United Kingdom. Why have you never fought in Jamaica? I, I've, been, I've been trying to line up something for Jamaica. I've been trying to take something home myself because... We'll never get anything lined up in, in Jamaica. So I am doing something on, on my end to see if I could do that. Um, a friend of mine who I played basketball with, somebody who had loved my career, he just died, Christ Pringle. Um, you know, who were, you know, that own MX3 lawn. You know, we were lining up something, but he died um, less than a, a little bit of a month ago from cancer. You know, and I still believe to my heart to really take something back there and just saying, hey, this is also a tribute to, to Cuba because that man's been there in my career, my whole life. He's behind everything that I've done so far. So, you know, I really, I really want to come back home and really do something over there. So there's no time frame, though, on when you're going to be back in the ring, though? Well, I was hoping I'll be back in the ring by August, but I don't think so. So, you know, I'm still doing what I do, you know, still, you know, keeping, staying safe. So if anything falls in place, you know, I am there for it. So let me ask you something. I, uh, I dug something up, and, and I, and I want to know exactly what, what happened here, if you don't mind talking about it. At 16, you were accidentally shot, right? Yes, sir. So what happened with that? Did would that did that possibly almost end your life, or was it just a graze? Or how? you know, it it actually that was a life ender. That was a life ender for me right there. It was a life ender. Um, what happened was, I think I had, I, I forgot what games it was that I came back from with a gold medal. And we had a party, a celebration, all that stuff was going on. And it ended up that that Sunday night, for some reason, me and my best friend actually dropped some people off at church. And I ended up went in and we went in together. And the, the preacher said, I can see danger in the young man's face. And he called us up to the front of the church you know what I mean, and put his hands on us, you know what I mean, pray for us and all that stuff. And we end up end up spending the whole hour and something in church. Um, however, um, after we left, you know, we were still in that little mood, wants to celebrate because here it is, you know, I won um, a gold medal at, you know, uh, I think it was, 
the Caribbean Games, I just got back from the CSC Games and then went to the Caribbean Games and went to won a gold medal. And um, so we were just, we were just celebrating and having a good time. And for some reason I started messing with a security guy, just, just playing around, just kidding around. And, you know, we always do that because, you know, he was a good friend of mine at the time. And we were just there playing around until, you know, he pulled a gun. And before he couldn't even pull the gun out of his jacket, the gun went off and I accidentally got shot. Um, we ended up jumping the cab and went to the hospital. And I died three times. But I died that night and came back. And they were, when I wake up, you know, they were getting ready to, they were talking about doing surgery and all that stuff and asking the question, they was even have insurance. And this was after I revived, after I came back to life. And then they were like, you know, does you have, you know, the money to pay right now? If you don't have the money, you know, we can't do nothing. Then it ended up that, you know, because I was there saying, hey, I will promise you guys you'll get your money, you know what I mean? If I got to make payments of the time, I'll go get a job and all that stuff. I'll make sure you guys get paid, you know. And it went on and on and on. And right before my best friend dad came and paid the $16,000 of my surgery, during surgery, I died again. But the goodness of God was, hey, I'm giving you my chance to go prove everybody wrong. I said, you can't do this, you can't do that. After my surgery, the doctor gave me, I lost 80% of my large intestine. Because after large, my, my large intestine was damaged bad, and they had to take 80% of it. So, they gave me three months to live, saying I couldn't box, play soccer, run track and field, play cricket, whatever else I did. I wasn't able to do that no more. And God actually just proved them wrong. I wasn't even supposed to walk. I was paralyzed from the waist down because the bullet was lodged between my, time, between my joints and my spine. So I wasn't even supposed to walk, and I walked before I left the hospital. I walked out of there. Wow, I so did I not. Did then. <laughs> and you became a pro boxer, and uh, look at the career you had. That's pretty amazing, Owen. It's pretty amazing, man. It's pretty amazing. You know, and, and my life is just the same. You know, whatever they say, I can't do. I tell them the grace of God, the power of God, overtake everybody, you know, prove them wrong. So this is, what I, this is what me and God do, man, prove a lot of people wrong. You know, a lot of people say, hey, you're 39 years old, you should walk away from the ring. Hey, I'm 39 years old, Peter, and this is my words when I was 20 years old. Well, listen, let me ask you about something. Now, you brought up the fact that uh, you're coaching and training amateur fighters now. So talk to me about the Fist of Fire Boxing. Uh, Fist of Fire Boxing is, um, you know, a thing that, that I, you know, I, I have here. Um, Fist of Fire is actually coming from Jamaica. Um, our team was Dreamscape Fist of Fire. And... You know, since the, the 1986 team, I was, I am still the one from the 1986 team that is still going today. Everybody else has done retired, I walk away from boxing. And I'm the only one that's still going from that, so, you know, I'm not sure where, you know, Alex is, Robert Harris, who we call him Colonel, I'm not sure where in the world he's at. But, you know, me and all of, all of our friends, all of us talk on a weekend or a weekly basis. And everybody says, hey, who's better to keep that name 
you know, it's you, you're the only one that can use that name. You're the only one from the 1980 16 that is still going. But so, so that's, I guess the name that, that's the, is that the name of your gym, though, too? Yeah, yeah, that's the name of my gym. So how's th so how's things going with you with you training and coaching the amateur fighters? Uh, it's it's going pretty good, you know. Um, my guys, we are, you know, the big young guys, but they're dynamic, you know. Um, just just teaching them the basic rules of boxing, um, you know, the art and craft, what really made this game what it is, and go back to the fundamentals that. A lot of people don't teach today. So I just go back to the fundamentals and make sure they they're able to go back to that and, and you know and have a good boxing fan style and and everything else that it takes you know to put together with today today's game and, and make it work. So you know. Kids are doing great. We just had a couple of fights last, six fights last week, had two wins, but then we should have had six wins, you know, but we only had two from it, which all the guys still, for some reason, all the guys got a win in their book. But Avatar has lost, but they got wins in their book. I don't know how that works, but I just tell myself, ain't no number I can say, I'm not calling anybody, I just leave it like it is. Okay. We're training for the 15th of um, August in Lexington again. Okay. So with that, Owen, I'm going to end the interview. I appreciate your time and uh, your honesty. And uh, I want you a chance to say something to your supporters and your fans. And uh, possibly if you want to call out Lucas Brown again, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, first of all, i got to say thanks to everybody who's been supporting me, all my fans. Um, worldwide, worldwide, um, you know, all the people in Canada and, uh, you know, hey, it's a one little thing, y'all know how that works. Um, I've been, I've been calling out a few people. Uh, first of all, I've been calling out all the guys that I really lost to. Um, I've said this, I've shown respect to two guys that I've lost to. Um, Monty Barrett and uh, David Rodriguez, you know, I was so love to those guys. Everybody else, I, I don't think I got that much love and respect for that I would say I would fight again. Even if I didn't have to fight for the title, I would fight them again. Um, right now, I'm Alex Leopai. I can't hear what that team has done since he fought Chris Cook. I've been trying to reach out to them, want to fight him again. That's not happening. They said, Lucas Brown is a man in Australia. So I said, hey, if he's the man, I want to go down there and go challenge him. Right? That's the thing, because a lot of people are scared to come to the States, you know, go to Canada, go to Jamaica, or wherever it is. So you know what? I come to your town. I come to you. I bring the fire. I bring the land and the thunder. So let's make it happen. So Lucas Brown, let's do this, man. You know, boxing is what it is. Let's go to war, baby. All right, and with that, the truth has spoken.